Welcome into the DePaul of DePaul Hoops podcast brought to you by 199. 199.com basketball historians bringing history to life with vintage DePaul basketball gear to make you feel like a guire in 1979. Go check them out today at 199.com. We've got a great show for you today. Uh, we've, we'll be talking about uh, the season so far, the injuries, of course, uh, the game against St. John's, and then the game Saturday against UTEP. Uh, along with that, we've got a great interview with DePaul great Wilson Chandler, 13-year NBA veteran. So with that said, let's jump into it, Blue Demon Nation. Welcome into the Pod of DePaul Hoops podcast brought to you by 199.com. Go check them out today and pick up some of that vintage DePaul basketball gear. As I mentioned, great show for everyone today. Uh, we've got, of course, Wilson Chandler. Uh, but first, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the recap from, from Wednesday night's Big East opener uh, at St. John's in Queens. And then on the tail end, uh, after we... After we've got the interview with uh, Wilson, we'll uh, talk about UTEP and the game on Saturday that's ahead. That said, let's get into it. 86-67, not a great way to start your Big East season. However, uh, you know, there's the, it's, the obvious is there. Nick and you are gone going up against Soriano, one of the most consistent big men in the league, in the nation, I should say. Uh, so hard to expect uh hard to expect guys like Errol Penn and Deshaun Nelson to be kind of playing out of, I mean to really be playing out of position and going up against Soriano and having any sort of um success I mean they 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 did their best they played hard and even coach Stubbs said uh the biggest thing that they need to focus on is coming out the gate strong versus looking flat-footed on on at, to start games Zion Cruz did have he led the team on Wednesday with 14, 14 points, 50% from three, 50% from the floor. So there's a, there's a positive to build upon there with, with Zion. Uh, so that's good to see the freshman do, growing, getting more minutes, especially since there are a lot of minutes available at, at this point. We've got, we've got February 14th. We're looking forward to, we'll have, uh, we'll, we'll have hopefully your back by then. Uh, and maybe even Nick, if everything goes well, if he, you know, if he's even able to get out on the floor this year. So we'll see. I mean, we hope that Nick gets healthy. We, that's number one. We hope that your gets healthy. That's also number one. Uh, so we'll see February 14th. That's the date. I think a lot of fans have circled on the calendar, uh, for, for reasons, of course, that will just kind of gloss over, um, but yeah, I I think that UTEP on Saturday will be a nice little bounce back, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the show. Let's jump into our interview with Wilson Chandler. Really great time talking to Wilson. Fun conversation. Talked about everything. Uh, so uh, enjoy and uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. <laughs> All right, welcome in today to Wilson Chandler, DePaul Great. Uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks for taking the time. And uh, how are you doing today? I'm great, man. Uh, I appreciate you having me. Uh, I'm looking forward to talking. Man. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, no. And, uh, you know, I saw you over at the Texas, uh, the game versus Texas A&M. They couldn't bring home the W. But, hey, I mean, it's cool to see you back back in Chicago uh, supporting the Blue Demons. Uh, so why don't we just jump in and let's talk a little bit about uh, – what brought you to DePaul? Why why you chose Chicago? And uh, what was that kind of aha moment that helped you make your decision? Uh, I mean, Chicago, you know, uh, being where I'm from in Michigan, um, in Ben Harbor, Michigan, it's an hour and a half away from Chicago. So we um, always got WGN. So, you know, um, my grandma, um, I, I grew up with my grandparents. My grandma loved loved uh, Michael Jordan and the Bulls. My grandfather, he loved the Cubs. So we would always get, you know, WGN. So I always had a love for Chicago sports, you know, uh, growing up. Uh, and AU, I had a teammate, Jabari Curry, who was my point guard. 
and he connected to Paul first. So that was kind of like my first introduction. Then I was like, man, you know, it'd be great if we could play together in college too, you know. Uh, so I took my visit. I love the coach. I love uh, Miss Ponsetto. I love the campus. I love Chicago. And then um, during my visit, I hit it off with uh, Draylon Burns right away, like the first visit. Um, so I wanted to be his teammate as well. Yeah, and I mean, you guys had some some pretty successful, you know, the two years that you were there, it was pretty successful seasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, you came out right at the gate. You had an opportunity right out the gate to show, you know, show yeah. your skills. And, and uh, you know, of course, there was the second year with uh, that Kansas game. How big, how big was that? Uh, yeah, that, was, that was huge. I mean, I think Sammy was the MVP of that game. I think we wouldn't sure. have won it without Sammy. But, man, just for us to get that win against a great team like that. Did they win the national championship that year? I think they did that year. I think they did come, come so out that, was, that year. So That was a that was a big win. I, was just, I just remember, like, yeah, we beat Kansas, bro. We could be really good if we just got everybody on the same page. We could be a great team. Because we had the individual players. I think it was it was just a thing. Like, I mean, I don't think everybody disliked each other, but it was just, like, I'm kind of out for herself with the exception of, with the exception of a few players. Yeah, no, definitely. But I mean, you guys almost did take out Kentucky as well that same season. So, yeah. Uh, no, definitely. but uh, what was your favorite thing about Chicago and uh, uh, playing, playing for Paul, obviously other than what we've already talked about here. Uh, my favorite thing about Chicago, um, I would say um, the food, man, the food is great. <laughs> The food is great, and uh, I love the architecture of the buildings. Um, yeah, so those are my favorite two things. And the best thing about DePaul, um, I would say it's, it's in a big conference, but it's a small school, and I think it's more like it feels more family-oriented, family, family oriented, I would say. Yeah, so I think that's probably my favorite, my favorite thing. And then also the mascot. I love, like, the mascot, the colors and everything. Are you just saying that because I was, you know, a former mascot? No, no, not at all. Not at all man. It's a, it's a very underrated mascot, man. The colors that blue, red, and black, man. So yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, so back to that Kansas game, right? You, you, uh, you ended up leaving it that year. But what about that season made you say, okay, hey, I, I want to move on. I want to, I want to take the next step. And I know I could, I bet on myself to, to take that next step. Uh, um, I think. I mean, it's a lot of different reasons. Um, one, you know, you want to definitely, you know, be able to take care of your family. But two, sure. I think just playing in the Big East and the, the tempo of, the, of that uh, conference at the time, it was a lot of – and we played real up and down and just seeing how the NBA was going, you know, with teams like Phoenix and other um, – New Jersey, how they play fast tempo. I just felt like at that time my game – fit with the the way the NBA was going. And I think I had a, a real shot, even though like I wasn't high on the draft boards. And you ended up and you ended up going the first round, twenty third pick yeah. to to yeah. New York. Uh so that that ended up well and and uh got you in the right spot. It seemed like uh with with uh coach Isaiah Thomas at the time. Uh yeah. he's he's that he's that uh old school make you earn your time kind of coach. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I got there, you know, I didn't play right away. Um, I didn't play at all the first year. I think I played like the last, like whatever games, 15, 20 games, but I learned a lot. You know, I had a lot of great vets. Um, he was a great coach. I had a, another DePaul legend, uh, Mark McGuire there as an assistant coach, you know, so I was able to sit there, you know, um, uh, learn from a great coaching staff, learn from some great vets. And then, you know, New York is never going to let you, just you know do anything so you know I, I had I, I had a chance to sit back and watch the fan base you know come to the games and give a lot of shit so yeah no so definitely it was, 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 Q, was Q year uh Q there that that first year or was yeah, that another another DePaul legend uh, um yeah Q was there he was my I played with Q for I want to say two and a half seasons almost three seasons what, so, you know, looking back at that, like, what was that? Was there, a, like, a relationship there? You obviously said Mark Aguirre, right? What yeah. what was there? Was there a, kind of a comfort level there, you know, coming in as a rookie, like, knowing that there's two other guys from, from the school that you went to? Um, yeah, um, I would say it was a comfort level just, you know, I, you know, I had a lot of time to talk to Isaiah before I got there. You know, Q took me under his wing. Um, Mark, of course, you know, and then other, other vets, too. You know, uh, Malik Rose was a great vet, Jared Jeffries. Uh, Jamal Crawford, Eddie Curry was one of my uh, good friends. Uh, Nate Robinson, you know, I had, I had a great like 
I had a great core around me. You know, we didn't we didn't win many games, but like we had some great people and some great players, uh, individual players around um, Zach Randolph. You know, Alan. Yeah, Houston. without. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, uh, without a doubt, I think that uh, I think that you guys you guys definitely uh, seem like a cool crew to be around and and yeah, to, I had a know, lot of fun. Like, it was come up it was, in right. Yeah, it was tough uh, about winning the games and not playing, but it was a fun group to be around. Like we had a lot of fun, uh, regardless of the situation. So before we get deeper in, in, into your uh, NBA career, I wanted to talk a little bit before uh, a little bit about uh, Coach Stubbs and Dwayne. Have you uh, been in contact with them? Obviously, you were at the A M game, as we as I said. But uh, what's that like? And uh, will you be getting a little bit more involved at the ball? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, Thad has been doing a great job of just uh, staying in contact with a lot of you know alum and uh, ex players over there from over there. Um, and I've had a chance to talk to the coach and. Dwayne and those guys and just telling me their plans for the team, telling me their plans for, you know, uh, some of the build out and uh, stuff like that. So, I mean, um, I'm definitely amazed and impressed, you know, with the job they're doing. I think they're building for the future and not right now. And I think that's what DePaul needs is somebody who's there to build for the long term and put those, uh, to lay those bricks down so we can have a, a, a sturdy uh, foundation. No, I, th- I think that's, that's good. And I think a lot of people would like to hear that too. So, yeah, um, so, so obviously this year, you know, you, you went through some injuries, unfortunately in your career, yeah. uh, DePaul's dealing with some injuries right now. What are your, uh, what, what kind of advice would you give to the guys that, that, that are, you know, injured out and yeah. trying to make that next step, but you know, they're, 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 they're on the bench right now. Um, I would just say, um, just stick with it, you know, um, it's obviously, obviously it's tough being out with injuries and kind of having that pressure, like to get back early, but you know, you can't help your team if you're not a hundred percent healthy. You know? So I would say just, you know, uh, focus on getting healthy, you know, be a little selfish with that because the more selfish you are with your health, the better you are for your teammates. So I would say just kind of like stay in the course. And, you know, when you have a bad day, just, you know, think about the future and think about, you know, what you're uh, building towards. Absolutely. I think that's, that's, uh, that's awesome. I, you know, I n- never, never played at that level, but, uh, I, I, I could imagine that that, that would be taken really, really good for, uh, by those guys. So definitely you got to understand, like, you know, just injuries are part of the game, you know, it's unfortunate, but you know, it happens to the best of us, you know, if, if D Rose can come back from his injury the way he came back and that was, you know, a gruesome injury, if Sean Livingston can do it and, you know, guys have little knickknacks and, here and there. So if those guys can come back from those type of injuries, you know, you know, we all can do it. Here and there. Definitely. No, without a doubt. And, uh, uh, so switching gears back to the NBA time, you spent time in New York, Denver. Uh, what, what was your favorite city to play in on the road? Uh, and, uh, and why? Um, a lot of, I had a lot of favorite cities. Um, I would say my favorite crowd wise, um, the garden, OKC when they had uh, Westbrook and um, KD, um, the Warriors, and I would say the Lakers too. Not more so because the crowd was like super hype, but you like to see like a lot of celebrities like that you grew up watching, Jack Nicholson, um, people of that that nature. You know, I think from that standpoint. Um, but I would say my favorite, if I had to choose my favorite, would be the the Bulls because I wanted to go to the Bulls coming out of college. I wanted to be a in Chicago, I wanted to stay there. Like Chicago is my favorite city, so especially I wanted... with your grandma being such a big Bulls fan too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I grew up watching the Bulls. My grandmother loves the Bulls. Like I, I love being in Chicago at that time, so I wanted to be there. So I would say, I always try to make it a big thing when we played the Bulls to have a great game. Good. No, that's that's cool. Uh, so uh, your style of play kind of bridged that gap from the '90s. You know. Uh, back to the basket, big men kind of deal. Uh, and you know, you played the three, four, and uh, bridge gap to the modern game to where we're at now with with uh, everyone going outside the arc and shooting that three. So, uh, how did you grow your game that way? And and what did you do to get to get to that that level to consistently scoring double double digits? And um, I would. I didn't take a lot of three. I don't think I don't think I took a single three. Maybe my freshman year. So I worked on my three game uh, that all season between my freshman and sophomore year. And even my sophomore sophomore year, I didn't take a lot of threes. But 
um, when I got drafted by the uh, Knicks, we had more of a traditional 90s, early 2000s lineup with uh, Zach Randolph at the four and uh, Eddie Curry at the five. But we switched gears, like, totally into the spectrum with um, with uh, Dan Tony the next year. And uh, we played small. So, I, you know, he wanted me at the four. You know, sometimes I played the five, depending on the matchup. Uh, had to play the three sometimes, but being at that four and he wanted me to spread the court. So I had to take a lot more threes and he would literally take me out the game for not taking, for turning down threes. Cause I wasn't used to taking that many threes. So um, that was something I don't, I don't think it was, it was a, something I needed to work on. I mean, obviously you always want to work on your shot. You can never be too good at your shot, but I think more so for me, it was just being comfortable with it at that time. So t- talking about your shot real quick before we, you know, move on to the next thing. Uh, you you play two K I, I assume. Did you ever play with yourself in two K? I tried to, but like I stopped playing two K consistently around like two thousand like ten, and I wasn't. I, well, maybe nine, like eight nine, really to be honest. And I wasn't that good on two K at the time, so I was like, nah, I'm playing with LeBron. So so I was talk, I was talking with uh, a couple people uh, before I, you know before we started talking, and they uh, they wanted me to ask you. They're like, did you know that your your shot, your uh, your mid range shot was automatic in two K, and they would always draft you and yeah. uh, and play play with you. So, uh, yeah, I was, honestly, I get that a lot. Like people, are like, man, I won so much money with you playing. 2K. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so talking about your teammates, you know, Nate Robinson. You mentioned him. Yeah. Uh, who who is who's your funniest teammate that you that you've had uh that you, that you've been on a team with man it just depends i got a lot man to be honest cuz you got the guys that are like just naturally funny who try to be funny then you got the guys who's who's just like funny when they serious um man uh i can i think i feel I, like Eddie, I, I feel like Eddie I Curry might be one of them of year man you got Nate Robinson you got uh Jared Jeffries uh you got man JJ Hickson, uh, <laughs> so so many Jameer Nelson. Uh, I I can name I can go down the line, just name and name a lot of funny guys. But man, I, I would say the funniest person I've been around in the NBA is uh, one of our assistant coaches, um, who was a great guy when we had Brian Shaw, one of his assistants, uh, C. Far, Chris Far. Okay. He was, he was super funny. What, what made him funny? What was – he was just something. Animated. He was just animated. And he was like – you know, he was a player. He was a player's coach. He was animated. Okay. So uh, nothing was off limits, you know, uh, in a good way. Um, very relatable, you know, um, and super down to earth. So, you know, he just – you know, he was a he was a funny guy, you know. Uh, he meant business, but he also knew how to have fun and, uh, and be funny. Who who's uh who's your, the the best trash talker on your like from your teammates or or even someone that you went up against? Um, best trash talker I ever played with Nate Robinson. Uh, yeah. Best trash talker I have played against personally, Kevin Garnett. Ah, okay. Yeah. Did he did he get in your head at all, or did he come yeah, at I you mean, with any? I, mean, I don't I don't think people ever get in my head. Uh, I think I get inside my own head, but uh, no, I've never. I mean, I mean, I remember one time we, when I was with the Knicks and he blocked my shot when he was in Boston. He blocked into the stands and he screamed super loud in my ear. But I ended up having a, one of the best games against. I think I ended up with like thirty points that game. So now yeah. and that was the beginning of the game. So I don't, I don't think it ever uh, got to me. Fired you, up, fired you up to. Yeah. But I've seen him get into a lot of the people. Here. That was one of my favorite players. At one point, he was my favorite player um, when I was a kid. Him and Kobe was my two favorite players of all time. So, so uh, who that said, like, who who do you style your game? Who did you style your game? Like, you um, emanate someone when you you know growing up. I mean, I think we all did, but <laughs> the people I the people that I love growing up, I played nothing like I love Kobe, T Mac, KG, but. That was never my game. I think the closest, the best uh, comparison I ever heard uh, was Rick Majerus when I was at DePaul. Uh, and I think I don't even think he was at St. Louis anymore. I think he was commentating at the time. Um, okay, and he compared me to Sean Marion. I, I can you know, see that. Uh, so I would say that's probably the the best comparison at that time that that I've heard. Um, and I wasn't mad at that because you know Matrix was a great player. So for sure. 
So, so uh, talking about some of your teammates, uh, I have to ask because Zamari, I don't know if you've heard of this or if you were aware of it, but he used to take bats and red wine. Did he ever like yeah. try to get you, get you get you all to like jump on the wagon with him in that? No, nah, he never. No, nah, he was he wasn't the type of person. Be like, do this, try this. You know, he was a lead by example person. Like, he did some things, and if he wanted to do it, if you wanted to talk to him about doing it, like, he would definitely help. But uh, I actually I actually did it when I retired, though. I tried it actually in um in Chicago at uh, what's the ancient air or whatever. Okay. Austin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So wow, it, actually, it wasn't bad. I mean, I don't know how it helped them for the game, but <laughs> <laughs> it was relaxing to me. So uh, on that same kind of like, you know, taking care of yourself, self-care, all that, uh, yeah. you, you were uh, notably, you notably went vegan for, for a little while. Are you still, are you still doing that? And what kind <laughs> of uh, effects did you, uh, did you see as far as your rehabilitation and things of that nature? Um, the, the immediate effects I felt was um, I recovered faster, you know, um, less lag, um, less muscle soreness, um, definitely had better sleep. Uh, better digestive uh system um uh, functions um energy but it was tough you know because i mean you always got to find vegan food every time you travel or you know i mean you're in memphis you know they got barbecue like you just smelling the barbecue <laughs> it's like hey, yeah i'm gonna get this salad <laughs> uh, but uh, i'm not i'm not vegan anymore man you know i when i first retired i'm like man i'm gonna just take these this first year to, you know, to enjoy all this good food. And that year turned into about two and a half. So now I'm back uh, on my healthy uh, diet. So. Wow, that's good. That's good. Oh, man. So uh, China, let's talk a little bit about China and, and going over there. What was that like? Was there kind of like a, you know, there's culture shock going from, yeah. you know, Benton Harbor to New York to Chicago, you know, but then China, then there's China. That's a whole different piece, whole different yeah. ball yeah. game, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, so... I'll go ahead. China's, you know, China's China. I had a, the, when I went there the first time, I had a great time. I think I was just there too long. Like when I first got there, I was excited, you know, traveling here to see this, see that, the Great Wall, hanging out in Shanghai, trying all the different foods, playing. And then I went over there probably a couple months early before the season started just to get ready. And I think about, I hit a wall about the time like the fifth month came. I was like, man, I'm kind of ready to go home. So, other than that, though, I had a great time. And then the second time I went, it was just too much going on. You had COVID. You had the presidential election going on over here. But, you know, they was heavily, like, you know, wanted to know who, like, who was going to win. You know, obviously, they, they didn't want Trump to win. Um, so you had that whole thing. So it just made it very kind of, like, uptight over there at that time. So I didn't, I didn't stay that full season. I'm like, you know what, this is. I was listening. To, I was listening to something uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, yeah, I was listening to something a couple of days ago. You did you have to like sneak out or what? How did you get yeah, out? I mean, I mean, basically, because I I had um. So when I on top of that, so when I got there, like you know, I was um. I was practicing with the younger team, waiting on the older the team I was signed to to come back. So you know, we start practicing. You know, over there, it's like it's a whole different like animals. Like two day practices every day. No matter what, like we going hard. So my knee started giving me some troubles. Um, so my knee kept flaring up. So, you know, I, once the season officially started, I sent my MR to a doctor here in the States and they was like, man, you need a surgery or whatever. So, you know, I'm like telling the team, like, I need surgery. And they like, oh, no, you just ready to go home. <laughs> like, you don't need surgery. You're faking. So I'm like, bro, I can't continue to play with my knee like this. So I was there for like a month trying to get out of there, like to like come home to have surgery. And now, so I just got to the point where I was like, man, you know what? I'm just going to buy my own ticket. I'm going home. I don't care what y'all say. I got my Google Translator app. Got me a, a car service. Tell them to take me to Shanghai. I was in a whole different city. So he drove me all the way to Shanghai. I left mm -hmm. my bags in China. I took a flight home. And I went straight out. I, I took a flight from China straight to Florida so I could have my surgery. I had my surgery New Year's Eve that day. Um and then I had to, you know, I had to go through a legal uh, battle with uh, FIBA, through FIBA with China, just to get my bags back. And I ended up getting some money, too. But oh, true. man. Yeah. So you did end up getting your bags back. Because initially, yeah, when, yeah. I, the, when it I heard it. took a long time to get my bag, too. Like, that was, like, I left and, like, like, like I said, I got back New Year's Eve. And I didn't get my bags to, like, 
pay food or some shit. Oh jeez, jeez, jeez. <laughs> no. Oh man. So so uh, so you got home. You're all you know. You're all safe. But what like would you ever go back? And yeah, I I would because um I think it was the it was the situation where you know China's China whatever, but the it was the coach man was just like man he's like I hate to say it but he was just a dickhead man. The coach was like he's one of them crazy like coaches that you hear about like one of them coaches from hell man. I think if it was a good situation, I definitely I mean I'm done playing, but if I was still if I was still playing, if it was a good situation. I would definitely go back. So I, I did have a great time in a lot of places in China. So, what was the what was the weirdest thing you ate over there? Um, I tried <laughs> I tried some type of insect this last time I was there, and I was like, you know what? Let me try it, whatever. And it wasn't it wasn't bad. I wouldn't have it again, but it I mean, it wasn't bad. It was, it was some type of it was some type of it was some type of beetle. Oh geez, oh, wow. it was cooked. Though. It wasn't raw. It was cooked. All right, all right. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll say maybe for me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but other than that, though, just the, you know the normal stuff. I didn't have anything outside of that. <laughs> so uh, let's switch some gears. Uh, you, you, I've seen you comment a little bit on like development of, of basketball players and things things like that. So yeah. what would uh, can you provide any advice for for people that are trying to get into the NBA or trying to come up through the AAU ranks and all that? Yeah, I mean, I can't give any advice. I mean, I can, like, talent-wise. I feel like right now, like, the talent in, like, uh, in, in basketball and especially with the, the youth is through the, roof, through the roof. Like, all these kids I see now, like, in junior high and high school, they doing, like, NBA pro workouts. So I think right now talent is way better than when I was a kid, when I was younger. So it wouldn't even be about that. It would be just about – um learning the game learning how to you know play the game you know uh, having a high you know basketball iq uh being a gym rat uh being coachable like listening to your coaches you know even if even if, i just feel like sometimes even if you're in junior high or high school like how many great coaches are in junior high or high school like just play you know just play like you know what i mean like i'm tired of hearing coaches like i mean players like that's in seventh eighth grade oh my coach terrible like who coach was great in seventh eighth grade? Like, it's probably someone's dad just like yeah, you know, you going off of work, like, right? Right, you're not even getting paid for this job. He's volunteering, bro. Like just just play the game. You know, um, I would say just focusing on basketball IQ, uh, being a good teammate, learning learning the game. You know, like I know everybody wants to score, but like you know, what I'm saying working hard, playing defense, you know, uh, working on your pass and working on going left left hand layers. I would say just being like the simple parts of the game. Just kind of like drilling that in your head, learning, learning the game, watching the game, uh, being around the game. And just I will also say uh, mental health, you know, just being mentally strong when it comes to the game. And also to giving yourself a break, you know, uh, from life and the game, too, as well, because, you know, uh, sometimes we so focus on basketball, like we forget like about everything else, you know. And when we don't have basketball no more, we, we're stuck now to deal with the stuff we kind of push to the, to the back. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's something that a lot of people need to heed just not even in the basketball world, just mental health as, as a whole. Uh, yeah. No, mental health is definitely something. Um, I think now it's like, everybody's doing a, a better job of, you know, kind of like talking about mental health, but you know, um, I think before like basketball players, our mental health, like how we dealt with that was basketball. Which is right. not which is not a bad thing because it does help, you know, like it's like going to the weight room. But also, you know, when you don't have basketball no more or the days you like, man, you know, basketball sucks. We all, no matter how much we love the game, we had those days where we like, man, basketball sucks. Like what are we doing to, you know, help with our mental health? Um, so I would say that's definitely a big part of the game as well that I think people should take more seriously, especially young players. That's good. No, that's definitely definitely uh, a good thing to to hear, and definitely something that people should heed. Uh, one thing that that I've been hearing a little bit on like hoop channels and things like that is uh, how uh, AAU and the high level youth basketball structure it's starting to price ki- like inner city kids and lower income level kids. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Price them out of basketball. Do you think that's actually a problem that that's coming up? Or um, I have to look into it. I, I can't speak from experience because like. AU is so different now. I I just started back watching like high school and AU basketball. And it's so different. I, I don't even totally understand how it even works now. Um, so I can't say, but I've I have also been hearing that. Um, 
And I've heard it from good sources. So, like, if those guys are saying it, it's definitely a thing. I trust those guys. So, you know, uh, yeah. So so you, you mentioned a little bit ago uh, transitioning from basketball to, like, quote, unquote, normal life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about what you're doing uh, outside of bas- – or, you know, after basketball now. Uh, I, I There had been some rumblings. I had seen that you may have been joining a – a front office uh, at some point. Uh, is there any any uh, potential for that in the future or anything like that? Um, hopefully, I don't know. With me turning that that position down, I don't know. Like sometimes you know, like you have a window, and then once that window is gone, like. But, but hopefully, I think at the time, you know, I I was super happy about like you know getting an offer for that position, but I don't. At first, I was like super into it, and I, the more I thought about it, I wasn't ready. So I was like, "Let me take some time, you know, to myself. I'm not ready." But I w- it, it's something definitely I would like to do in the future. But like I said, I don't know if that window is closed or not. So yeah, no, no definitely. Yeah, let's. So then let, let's bring it back to Benton Harbor. Things you're doing in your community. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, I've definitely seen uh, your involvement. Uh, you know, just, just be you're, you've always been involved in your community, but, but uh, now with like the, the Chet, the Chet, Chet Walker uh, classic, uh, w- what brought you to do that? And, and uh, what do you want to bring to your community with, with that? Yeah. Um, so it, it just started um, simply just because, you know, we're from a small area, but when I was in school and before me, we always play really good teams. We played the teams in the area, but we always play, teams from Muskegon. We always play teams from Grand Rapids, Detroit, Flint, Saginaw, sometimes even Gary and South Bend. Um, so we always play good basketball teams. And I don't think that's the case, like, consistently in the last whatever years, decade or whatever, or maybe a little bit shorter than that. So it came simply from that. Like, I'm just tired of, like, watching them play fucking <laughs> – you know, uh, terrible teams. Um, not to call kids terrible or nothing. Yeah, like, no, I know what you, you mean. Know what I'm saying like not, yeah. competitive, not competitive. Teams, bringing so. high, bringing high, higher level competition to the area yeah. so that they could be, so that they could be, uh, yeah, and, yeah, and, and, hi- and, highlighted and sh- yeah. shown, make their tapes and get their name out there and things exactly. like that. And I think that's too. Like, I'm glad you said that. I think too um, to bring in, you know, uh, more talent, bring in more competition. To also, you know, bring our our level up and play against the best, you know, and, uh, you know, if you got good players, you know, you're going, that's going to attract scouts and, you know, uh, college coaches. So just kind of highlighting uh, and bringing some of the best players in the state. And then uh, we also got the Paul um, prep coming too. So I saw uh, that too. Yeah. yeah that's, that's and, pretty cool. With- who, uh, not to cut you off. We, I, no, so I'm, I'm in the process right now. I haven't told them about, so it's the first time I've told somebody outside of the people that's helping. We have, we, we're a chain. We don't have to, but we're changing the name to the Wilson Chandler shootout. Okay. We had uh, Chet Walker's a great guy. Never met him personally. Uh, he's the he's the most notable. Oh, not I wouldn't say notable. He's the most decorated player that ever came from my area. He played for the Bulls, obviously. Um, was great in college. Great in the NBA. NBA Hall of Famer. Like that's that's enough in itself. Um, <laughs> but you know he's you know he's older now. You know so a lot of um, stuff he doesn't handle himself. You know. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just it's difficult when you're dealing with family and stuff like that, you know, and, uh, you know, me being an ex-NBA player, you know, using his name. Oh, I know this guy's making money off this and then guys are doing that. So it's like, yeah. you know, what, you know, um, this is just really wanted to highlight, you know, a former uh, player and kind of like bridge that gap between um, ex-players and, and players that's coming up just to, you know, to have that um, that alumni and just have, you know, older and younger guys, you know, respecting each other and communicating with each other and just for the love of the game. But, you know, everybody doesn't see it that way. It's always something extra with it. So that was something, you know what, you know, I just name it after myself and we can just go forward. So we're in the, we're in the process now of like changing the name, but everything else is still the same, same team, same times. So, yeah. So if you're in the, the Paul area or if you're in the Chicago area in, in general, come to the, come to Bay Harbor, February yeah, 11. I'm, I'm in I'm in Valparaiso. I'll, I'll probably shoot up there. So yeah, definitely. If you want to, you know, do some media stuff there, doing the Absolutely. games, you know, let me know for sure, for sure. Uh, so you've 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 got an eye for art, and uh, you know, you, you t- 
art has been an outlet for you through music or uh, on different mediums of art. Uh, I remember hearing from one of my good friends back in college, she had an art class with you at DePaul and how you had a passion for art from back, even back then. Uh, How did, you know, how does that become, how did you use art and other uh, like music or theater as as an outlet for you, or even just as a a new culture, new cultural experience? Um, it's crazy because you saying that. I didn't even realize until, you know, as of late that I had a passion for art back then. Um, I thought it came like in the last few years, but like looking back, I did. Uh, but it's been a great outlet, whether it's music, movies or actual like paintings or whatever. I love going to uh, museums and exhibitions to different galleries and stuff like that. Um, it's been great for me. That's how I unwind. Like that's what kind of um, intrigues me kind of go in there, you know, uh, look at different art and different artists and kind of read the history on that artist, you know, read the history on, on certain pieces of, you know, why they painted it, you know, what's the reasoning behind it. And also form my own reasoning and kind of just sit there and daydream and just, you know, come up, come up with my own thoughts. That's cool. No, good. Uh, one last thing I want to touch on before we get going here. And, uh, thanks again for joining me. You do have nobody's home new, new to Benton Harbor. Can it's a cannabis, uh, dispensary. Uh, what, like what, how did that, uh, that business develop and how did that, how did that come about? And, you know, nice, nice to bring it to your, your area and, and, uh, serve your community with that. Um, I would say, unfortunately, but fortunately, I, I've always, not always, but I've, you know, for a long time partake in, uh, in, in cannabis. Um, so, and it, it wasn't always what it is now. It was always frowned upon. So you either sneak and do it or you get in trouble from doing it. Like I lost a lot of money <laughs> from fines, you know, <laughs> um, with it. So, but now I'm just happy that it's in a space where it's like, it's not a bad thing. It's a thing that can help. It's a thing, you know, um, not only help health wise, but it also can help, you know, with, bringing jobs to, you know, certain communities and, you know, um, getting people out of prison that's been falsely, you know, uh, arrested for, you know, marijuana. So it's many benefits now that it's legal. So it came about, you know, I was a team, I had a teammate of Al Harrington in Denver. Um, he invested heavily in the cannabis space. He, uh, he has one of the, if not the biggest black owned um, cannabis brand, Biola. So I invested in his, uh, his brand early on and, um, uh, so once Michigan became legal, I wanted to get there because I'm from Michigan. So that's how uh, Nobody's Home came. So I wanted to open up a, a couple stores, you know, one starting in my hometown to bring business there, help with that, the taxes and all that, and also pre- provide jobs for people in the community and also have – and also have – Your yeah. involvement in the community has, has been outstanding, man. I mean, just uh, from from that business venture to, to other things, I mean uh, – it, it's admirable. It's awesome. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you, you, you have the opportunity to do that for your community. I'm sure you, you are also glad that you could do that as well. But, yeah, uh, yeah. uh, I just want to thank you again for spending time with me tonight. And, uh, again, uh, thanks for what you've done for the DePaul community. Thanks for what you're, you're doing in your community as well. And, uh, c- successful NBA player, successful businessman, and just a su- successful human being, uh, all around. So thanks again. Uh, Wilson, uh, I got, we'll I got soon. one last, one. I got yeah. one last thing while yeah. we're here. I just need, I don't know who I need to talk to, but we need to get some jerseys retired. Not mine, but we need, we need to get some jerseys retired. We got a lot of guys. We need, I feel like, you know, because it's not like DePaul is putting out NBA players every year. We need to, we need to get some jerseys retired. We need to get, you know, Q Ridge, Bobby Simmons, you know, Rod Strickland. And I'm pretty sure some other guys that I'm not named, but we need some guys' jerseys that we get retired and have some type of, like, event for this during some game. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know. So, like, I don't know how that process works, but we need to start some type of, like, ballot or something like that or just get some signatures. But we need, like, those guys to be. I think Dwayne's working. I think Dwayne is working on that, but I'm definitely going to use this clip and, and make sure and, and spread this all throughout the, throughout the internet with that, with that. Yeah. So no, definitely uh, if, if anybody's working on it, I know he's working on it. He's great. So. Yeah. Without a doubt. Uh, that's awesome. I'm glad you said that. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up and uh, thanks again, Wilson. We got to do this again. We'll uh, have to do it around the Wilson Chandler showcase. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right.
All right. Thanks again to Wilson Chandler for joining me. And you heard it there. You know, he wants to see some of those numbers retired. It's time. And I know Dwayne's talked about it. There's a committee that's been formed. So sooner rather than later, I'm assuming something's going to happen on that front. Uh, so that said, let's talk about UTEP. Uh, UTEP Saturday, 5.30 p.m., Wintrust Arena. The first 250 students will get that ugly Christmas sweater. And uh, also, it's a $5 beer night. So head out to the stadium, go support DePaul, and uh, bring home that decisive W against a 194 Ken Palm and a 185 net team with one guy that's taller than our tallest guy, but he's averaging at 1.5 minutes a game in Derek Hamilton. Uh, you tap the miners as a team, <clears throat> the miners as a team, they, uh, they're averaging, I think 72 points a game, 74 points, excuse me, a game and, uh, a dismal 25% from three. So, uh, this is a team that, DePaul should match up well against, bring home that, uh, like I said, decisive victory, uh, get guys like Mo and Javen in the game early and shooting the ball uh, with, you know, good ball movement, of course. Play that game that Stubbs likes to have his teams play. We saw them get knocked off their game. <clears throat> <clears throat> We saw St. John's knock DePaul off their game and cause some havoc uh, in that sense, in the shooting sense, seven for 30 from in that last game. But up until that point, DePaul has been shooting the ball lights out. So you're going to have that. You're going to live by the three. You're going to die by the three. It's, it's how the season goes as far as what we've got on the court, uh, not having our bigs down low to get that, uh, to get spacing at, at a better at a better level for our our shooters, even drives and kicks aren't as easy to 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 execute properly and well, given our given the current situation. So get out there on Saturday, do play your game, play it well, and uh, bring home that W, and then look forward to Duquesne and Northwestern. So Duquesne will be. Uh, next Wednesday, and then a week from Saturday is Northwestern at Northwestern. So two games uh, before you get back into Big E's play against Creighton and then Georgetown uh, to finish off the year. Uh, I hope to have a couple more episodes before the end of the year. I hope we could line up some uh, some other great interviews for you all to enjoy. Uh, and we'll try to start doing some more game recaps. But in the meantime... If you're on Twitter, uh, we will be having game day spaces uh, pretty regularly. So just uh, go be on the lookout for that. And until next time, go Blue Demons.